see ya. Praise God, we are live. Just had a good get together with George and his wife Asha. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful couple! I love them. Miss Asha is so sweet, such good people. It's good to be with brothers and sisters from all over the world, man. They started in India, then headed to England, then headed to you know what was it, Kuwait, and then here in Canada and uh, worldwide, and we praise God for that. And M Mimi and I enjoyed every second of it, man. Still enjoying it. And they fed us, we went out and had us a chicken dinner, and it was great, just being with our brothers and sisters. I'm sorry for coming on late, that's why we're late. And I don't have international communication. So I was gonna warn y'all while I was out and couldn't, I can't even get a messaging phone uh, George tried calling me and I, it wouldn't let me answer it up here. I could hear it ringing. I could hear it ringing. And I, when I went to go redial, call him back, wouldn't let me do that either. So look at Heather. She showed up late, man. I love it. Late night. She was ready early and still here late. I love it. Uh, it's t the 10 o'clock hour up here where we are. And we just praise God. Hey, I, I got five fresh codes to get into. They're powerful. I did not want to wait till tomorrow to do these. We want to do them tonight. And uh, by God's grace, you'll be blessed in them. Amen? Amen. Why don't we uh, just remind you that it's time to, to get saved God's way. You must be born again, and that's by believing. Placing your faith, your full-on faith in Jesus Christ alone. His death, burial, and resurrection alone. Nothing else, guys. You, you must come to the place where you believe that he did it all for you as a gift. And you believe that. The moment you believe it, it's a gift only. I can't do nothing to get me saved or keep me saved. I believe Jesus. It's only you. And the price you paid with your blood, you poured out every drop of blood to pay for my ransom in full. And I believe that. The moment you believe that, you're saved. And you're once saved, always saved. And if you don't believe in once saved, always saved, you're still lost. You need to believe in once saved, always saved. That God, Jesus Christ, gives gifts without repentance. He don't take them back. In my neck of the woods, we call that Indian given. I can say that because I'm Indian. Indian given. Given, take it back. And uh, so anyway, Native American giving. All right, here we go. Why don't we uh, make sure that we are into the Bible codes. Understand these Bible codes, guys. This is the very heart of God. This is God's word in his dialect. Okay. This is him speaking to us in end times. It's not for all Christians. Otherwise, all Christians would be here right now. But it's for you that have heard it. It's for you that have seen it. And this is a testing ground like everything else God has in our lives. And I encourage you to pass the test. I encourage you to believe and understand. Download this ebook. Heather puts up the link every night. And so it's on any of the Bible code messages that we do download that thing she's got it right here the free ebook 530 published codes download that thing okay and come to understand these things read them over and over just read the translations real fast just to get just to get the understanding there are little sections called translation read that part go to the next one translation read that part go to the next one okay and when you have difficulty read sean's commentary because sean's commentary means everything on this hey heads up Thank you. Heads up. Hey, Heather. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Amen. Praise God. So we got five fresh ones. Let's get rolling. All right. Sean gave these to me, man. I didn't have communication when I got here. We got the Wi-Fi. I got it turned on, cranked on, and Sean was rolling them. While I was copying and pasting, he was still rolling. Look at David, man. Hey, family. I pray the Lord is keeping you well. Praise God. We pray the same for you, brother that uh, you are in safe hands with him, you walking with him, walking by faith and not by sight. Amen. And we appreciate the prayers for everybody here. We pray for you. It's good being with our family, guys. We're, we've been meeting the Canadian family. We met Cush, and that was such a joy meeting his mama. Broke bread together and fellowship together. He gave me this awesome computer that I use every day, every night. Such a huge blessing. Hmm? In Cali, says the wifey, in California. And they drove up a couple hours or so to meet us through traffic and everything, and that was great. Now we're up here with our Canadian family on the east side in Ontario visiting, and we're going to 
stay here for another day. And uh, then we'll head on up and see Heather and Micah, man. We're excited about that. Stay with them a couple days. And then we'll head on home. By God's grace, you know. We're, we're letting him lead us, but that's the plan. And appreciate your praying for us. Thank you for praying for us. Sean and I, every night, he comes up with these codes. And God called me to, to fire them up and preach them. Awesome. Praying for your trip. Go really well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alicia. Good to see you here. Let's go through these codes. He found a couple codes on me and this trip. How this trip is pointing to him, the olive tree, him, the lampstand. Remember the last couple days showing you the, the address I was at was 77. Guess what address I'm at now? You guys know that Sean was born in 77, right? You know that his number one uh, nemesis, his enemy, the most hated guy on the planet is going to be the Antichrist. We know that to be Barack Obama, who was born in 1961, and this place I'm at is number 61. Sean, 77, Barack Obama, 61. My trip is a prophetic point-by-point -point trip, and God's using these points to verify to all the Jews in the tribulation, all the Gentiles, all the believers, that what we said was truth. And this trip is proof of it all along the way. So let's get going here. This first one, I need my phone, sweetie. Uh, my phone, there it is. Okay, you already got it here. Coffee, I need coffee to kick in, I guess. All right, let's look at this thing. I should have had it fired up. I just wasn't, wasn't thinking. I wanted to get on here as soon as I could. Uh, pray for the two witnesses, Sean and his twin. And pray for the 144,000 and... Everybody, pray for them all now, the people that need to be saved. Alicia says, I was telling Sean, there's a man who is my friend's father-in-law, very sick in ICU, been praying. He is 77 years old, another 77. God puts these in our lives, guys. Don't let them be just a willy-nilly or that doesn't mean nothing. It all means nothing. You are coming to four in a couple days. Ah! So we go from 77 to 61 to four. I'm ready to go to four. Anybody ready to go to four with me? That four door, Revelation 4, 1, was set before me, was an open door. Let's go through that door. The Dalit, amen. The fourth flame, Pentecost. The spring, summer rapture of Pentecost. Here we find ourselves in 2023 again on God's prophetic calendar. Here's a, here's a good thing for you to do, especially when you doubters. Go ahead and put the date, April 17th, A.D. 30, 30 A.D., in your time and date thing, and see how many days it is until Jesus' birthday, which is in two weeks from today. What? Is it two weeks or three weeks from today? Today is, what is today, guys? Good night, I can't even, t yeah, today is the ninth, so 20 days. Three weeks from today is, was yesterday was Jesus' birthday, Okay. So just put that date in there, the September 29th, 2024. See how many days it is, and then divide that by 360. 2023 and some dates. It'll say five months. We've just given you an idea. That's not the real dates. That's just the approximate date because it's a little earlier than the numbers you're going to get. All right, let's go through these Bible codes, man. I never did find the picture for you. What is wrong with me? Let's do that. Find the pics, man. Yeah, Brother George and Miss Asha. What a great, great, great time. She's the sweetest lady, guys. They are both so blessed and smart. Both so doctors. They're both doctors. And so down-to-earth, sweet people. They're not heady and high-minded. They're brilliant and smart but they're sweet and humble, and that is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I love being around that. Uh, looks like Princess Evelyn's tried to call, but I got both phones busy, don't I? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's see here. All right, guys. Get this picture out here. Show you what's going down. Bam, I hope they pop up. My phone's doing that thing. That's why I one of the reasons I can't communicate. That's the one. That's the first one we're looking at. Okay, here's the first one we're looking at, guys. Boom. 
you'll see some different colors in the same line, the same column. That's incredible because this skip is 93,125. Steve-O, bless the Lord fam, I'm fired up. I was born in 77 in a terrible place called Calgary. Dude, quit. It will soon be up in flames like their wicked hockey team. I'm with you, homeboy. I'm with you. Praise God, good to have you with us. Long time no see, dude. All right. This says, another another fellow Canadian, eh? Eh? Praise God. What, what's the number of your address? Does it have some biblical numbers? I know it does. I know it does. 77, 61, and 4 is where we're going to experience it. Amen? All right. Here's what that line says, that, that code. At a skip of 93,125, the burden of Elijah's days. The burden of Elijah's days. Steve-O, I was born in Calgary too, brother. It's all wicked <laughs> right across the country. It is. It is. When I come into customs, man, they were blowing weed all over the place. It smelled like a dead skunk laying in the hot sun for four to eight hours, man. It was pretty rancid. And they were checking me. All right. <clears throat> The burden of Elijah's days, blue and pink brown. He warned like fire, Sean Mitchell. In the 600 year, this is Genesis, that's the green line, Genesis 7, 11. Check this out. In the 600 year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, that's my birthday. 2, 17, 68, 68, Okay. In the 17th day of the month, the same day, they were all fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were open. And here comes the flood. Here comes the destruction. And here's what we got. We got Elijah and Moses doing this thing. Through tonight, you'll see that Sean is the Bible code guy. And God's called me here on the, this side of the rapture to be the voice for it. And therefore, it is a flaming fire voice because it's God's word. It is a sword voice because it's God's word. And this is what God is referencing tonight. It says... And the deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. Destruction, destruction, it's on the way. Deuteronomy 34, 10. And there hath not risen a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Hey guys, get your prophets right. Get your calling and your election sure right. And know right now that you're not Moses. Okay? Korah? Make sure you know that and don't rebel and don't go talking and don't be silly. Even though you're a cousin, God will kill you anyway. Even though you're a Levite, God has no problem killing with those who mess with his chosen ones. Okay? Just to, just heed the warning is all I'm getting at. Amen. Uh, whom the Lord knows face to face, God will talk to him. Deuteronomy 6.24, and the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always. God only does things. He only has given us the word for our good always. It's for your good. Just do what it says. It's counseling a woman on this last leg and with a little spirit of Jezebel there. And she kind of has an issue with the preaching because the preaching of God's word and, and reading 10 to 20 chapters a day kind of goes against her game plan, what she wants. And you can see that rile up in her eyes like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take that advice. I'm going to encourage you if the fire of the Lord falls. At the mouth of who, whoever is reading that book, it is a fire of the Lord. It is the sword of the Lord. Heed as fast as possible, okay? Heed as fast as possible. And the Lord commanded, do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is this day. We're going to be raptured alive. You guys know that, right? Amen. And when you reap your harvest in your field and you forget a sheaf, don't go back into the field and fetch it because God has, in his wonderful blessing, left that for somebody else. The poor, the wretched, the naked, the miserable, the blind, the widows, and the orphans. Okay? God's all about seeing ahead, way ahead. He's done that in your life. He's done it in mine. He's taking care of us. All he is is a protector, and he does it all for your good. Let him do that. But when you drop a sheaf here to the Jews in your field, whether it's grain uh, or whether it's barley or wheat, leave it. Don't go back and fetch it. It's going to be for the stranger, for the fatherless, and for the widow, that the Lord your God may be, he'll bless you and all the work of your hands. Oh, I might need that sheaf. God's got a better plan for you. Leave the sheaf, obey his statutes, do what he says. 
Numbers 18.24, For the tithe of the children of Israel, for they are set apart as a gift unto the Lord. I have given to the Levites for an inheritance. Therefore I have said unto the Levites among the children of Israel that they shall have no inheritance, for I, God, am their inheritance. Oh, you're kidding. That's all I get is God. Oh, man. That's what the Levites begin to think. And they were ordered not to buy houses and lands. And there we see Barnabas in the New Testament getting saved and selling the land that he had purchased when he shouldn't have done it. We got Matthew at the receipt of the customs. Levi right there, tax collected. And the Lord had him change his ways according to Scripture. Amen. Garrus, good to see you, dude. I saw 333-444-666 and 777 all in a few hours of each other. Amen, dude. God bless you. Glad to have you here with us tonight. Exodus 16, 7. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he hath heard your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that we you murmur against us? I'm just preaching to you, man. Don't you get mad at me. I'm telling you what God said. I'm telling you what he said in his timbre. I'm telling you what he said with his attitude, which attitude he had when he said it. And he's still saying it the same way to everybody today. Don't get mad at me. Who am I that you'd get mad at me? I'm bringing you the fire of the Lord, which is the word of God. And every time you share a Bible verse, you're bringing the fire of the Lord. Amen? I say bring that fire, dude. Burn the place down. Calgary, we'll start with you, flaming fools. Hey, good word, guys. All right. Exodus 32, 23. So they said unto me, Hey, make us a God which shall go before us. And for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't even know what's happened to him. He's been up in that holy mountain where the fire and the lightning has been zapping for almost 40 days now. We need something. We need a religious move or something. Somebody make me a cow. Okay, I just need to worship something. That's what Israel has done. That's what the Christian church has done. How many Christians you know have a favorite hockey team? How many Christians you know have a favorite baseball team, basketball team, football team, soccer team? How many Christians love racing, Formula or NASCAR? I don't care. I love them both. But the purists, the purists, they have Formula. They don't like that NASCAR. <laughs> Will you quit? How about be a purist in the Word of God, okay? Why don't you come and tell me the synopsis of Hosea? Close your Bible. Look me in the eyeball and tell me what Hosea is all about, because you're going to want to know that, especially if you're lost. Hosea is about the destruction of Ephraim. The United States is Ephraim. We have half the Jews, that half, the Ephraim half, living here. You read Jeremiah 50 and 51, and you're going to watch what God's up to. Why don't you get a little fire lit under your tail, start reading the Bible, understanding what it's talking about. Those Bible prophecies of the Bible prophets, of those 17 prophets, hadn't been done yet. They kind of had been in a foreshadow before, and some of those events happened in Jerusalem, and some happened in Israel, but those were just shadows of what's about to happen worldwide, beginning in the United States and ending in Israel. Amen. Amen. Cush, God bless everyone here. I've been missing the live streams because I'm not sure when the Bible study will be live. And it's supposed to be 726 every night, but things are going kind of squeegee all when we get when we get to Heather's t tomorrow night it should be 726 when we get to Heather's it'll be 726 because she's on it she's like no 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 we're going to be home for Bible study and we'll say okay man amen all right good to have you with us for sure praise God says David amen bro all right and the Lord said unto her two nations are in your room a womb this is Genesis 25 23 two nations are in your womb the two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Right now, the United Nations is Esau, Edom. The uh, Vatican is Edom. They hate Jerusalem. They hate Judah. They hate Jacob. They're coming to kill them, man. And God's going to send Sean and the other guy back to say, no, you're not. And God is going to use Sean and the other guy to be his vengeance. Remember Elijah, the first time he was here, he'd call down fire. Oh, if I'm a man of God, may fire come down and consume you and your 50 men. And he did it twice. Now it's a total of 102 dead. The third bunch come and said, how about we add nobody to that number? We're not trying to be mean to you, Elijah. We're just doing our job. 
please, I'm humbling myself before you. Please don't kill me and my men. The king has just requested that we come get you and bring you to him. He said, okay. Elijah kills people, folks. Sean and the other guy are going to be killing people in the tribulation. They're going to be killing them. And we know that in the plain text. Just read Revelation 11 carefully. Exodus 6.1 Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I shall do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of this land. Obama. Obama's going to hate Sean and the other guy, those 144,000 witnesses. He's going to want them good. He's going to want them in under his thumb, going to want them under his thumb. And then finally, he's going to say, just get out of here. He's going to try to kill them. Get out of here. And he can't kill them. Get out of here. And he can't kill them. And finally, three and a half years into the whole gig, halfway through the tribulation, God's going to let Obama kill the guys only when Satan enters him. God's going to let Satan do it, not Obama. It's the power of Satan in Obama that God's going to give the power to to do it. Amen? And he said, and then Pharaoh's going to see you go. And that's what's going to happen to these guys. They're finally going to go and they're going to ascend up to heaven. Whoa. It's going to astound everybody, man. So that code was 93, 125. And it says the burden, the weight, the message. The message is a weight. It's a burden. The burden of Elijah's day, he warned like fire, Sean Mitchell. The word of God is fire. And he's warning, 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 and there will be death. There will be people being wiped out. All right, this next one's a real skinny dude, man. Powerful. I'm glad to be here with you, even in the late hour, man. What a blessing. That ain't it, is it? That's it. You, you, you can't even see this. I can't even see it. Okay, here's what I want to do. See if I can blow it up some. Okay, there we go. Okay, this thing is so skinny at the top. We'll show you the green ones at the top. Boom, where are you, green ones at the top? Good night, I can't even see them. Good night. Let me scroll down, here's the red ones. Can you see the red ones at all? I couldn't hardly see them in that. Kind of, kind of, sort of. Good night. That's weird, man. I can't see none of them. I got this lighting above me that I really can't dig. I do love this place. Oh, George picked this place out for us, and it's pretty sweet, man. It's a basement, someone's house, Air, Airbnb, and it's pretty nice. Hey, thanks for making the effort. Yeah. All right, are we back? Here we go. Your internet connection was restored after they took it out. Okay, so that little skinny dude, let's see, that was at a skip of 63. Yeah, amen. Is negative 63, 613. Negative 63, 613. And here's what that little skinny line says. The map of Jehovah is a mountain, and the days of Elijah are wrath. Now, the map of Jehovah, the map of Jehovah is a mountain, and the days of Elijah are wrath. We know about Sinai. We know about all the trails of Sinai. All these Bible codes are a different trail. God goes this way, and he goes that way, and he goes this way, and the stuff we discover on that trail is pretty awesome. And the map of Jehovah is a mountain. He's looking at that mountain. He's looking at this Bible code. And he's looking at Elijah. He says, now let's go speak some of this stuff. Amen. And then it says Mitchell. That's what we saw. So that whole, that whole skinny little line says, the map of Jehovah is a mountain. And the days of Elijah are wrath. That was the red part. That little green part was Mitchell. And the main code is at Genesis 7, 17. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it was lifted up above the earth. And what's that? Destruction. That's the rapture, right? We're getting ready to get raptured, getting ready to get taken out of here. And when we do that, the, the map, God's map, his road map to heaven, believe, that, that's the map. You want to get to heaven? Here, let me give you directions. Believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. 
of Jesus Christ, immerse your entire eternity in that truth and believe it. That he paid for your price in full with his shed blood. And now destruction's coming. Do you believe that part of the code? I'm going to encourage you to believe that part of the code and get saved. I'm going to encourage you to believe that part of the code and get busy. Do something for Jesus. Go tell some folks about Jesus Christ. Warn them of the heretics. And encourage them to believe. All right? And then that we saw Mitchell in there. That goes right through Exodus 19.21. And the Lord said unto Moses, Sean Mitchell's Moses, he said, go down and you charge the people lest I break through, unless they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them die, perish, rot. So that's a pretty clear message. Sean is Moses. In the end of days story, in the first half of the tribulation, right now, bringing the fire down from the mountain, and we all love his map. I love the map of God. You love the map of God? Do you love the man of God? I do. I love the map and the man. Praise God. God chooses wisely. He chooses perfectly. Everything he does, boy, you get a cheer and a shout and a holler for me, Lord. How about a clap? Let's do, let's do a, not a golf clap. Let's do a real clap. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Amen? Shout unto God with a voice of praise. Clear message. Elijah Moses go up and they come back down. They go up and they come back down. The rapture, that 40, <laughs> 40 days of rain. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been out in the Kim Trails. 40 days of rain and then they come back. Clear message, guys. Elijah and Moses go up and they come back down. Start in Exodus 6.16. And these are the names of the sons of Levi, according to their generations, Gershom, Kohath, and Merari. And the years in the life of Levi were 137 years. He was one of the 12 tribes of Israel, one of Jacob's 12, Levi. And he lived 137 years. Anybody ever see that 137 a lot? I see that thing a lot. The years of Levi, point you, that number will point you to Levi. And then right at the base, right at the base of this thing, you saw that long skinny line? Right at the base it says, and these are the names of the sons of Levi. Moses and Elijah, both of them are Levites. We knew Sean was. Both of the guys. The other guy, Sean and the other guy, are both Levites. And these are the names of the sons of Levi, Elijah and Moses. Both are Levites. And then here's the next one, man. This is the one talking about my trip up here. Blew my mind when he showed this to me. And, and my, you know, everything we do is prophetic, right? right? Right here at the time. When God calls you, you better be focused on some prophecy and God's word, his truth. All right. Amen. Is everybody still here? Are you guys still here? Because I got kicked off a while ago and then it showed me that I came back on and I don't know that I came back on or not. All right. Here's the next one. Maybe you can see this. Okay. Let's show you this one. I'll show you half and half. There's that half of the page. You got that green skip. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like a seven skip at the bottom there. All right. And then we come on over here. See the rest of it. Okay, good. Thanks, guys. It's on. So that's what it looks like. And I got so much brightness in this room. Just doesn't want to show all the way, but that's the idea. Let's see what it says. It's at a skip of 410,000. 410, 421. 410,421. And here's what it says Watkins is my song of praise, or Watkins is singing the praise. Okay? That's me. And on those video, I didn't even I didn't even know she was filming the video of Friday night. 
and there there is what can sing in. Okay, and we're, we're singing the song. We're singing the song of Moses and the Lamb, the song of Moses Mitchell and the Lamb. That's what we do here every night. I don't know the tune just yet, but I preach it with fire because I'm preaching the lyrics of the song. Amen? And that's what we're doing right now. This is one of the lyrics of the songs, the unpublished version, version of it. Watkins praised, and then you got that green, navy, brown, purple, blue, gold, pink. Green, navy, brown, purple, blue, gold, pink. Here's what it said. The days of Elijah. We were singing that on Friday night. The Filipino church guy with the guitar. The days of Elijah. And Moses. The music, the song, it was already sung. <laughs> the days of Moses and Elijah are here. They're on the way. People sing about it and don't know that the representative for Elijah and Moses is right there in the middle of them singing this song. I didn't know I was being recorded doing it, but God says, hey, yeah, Watkins was singing my song. He was singing my praise. Continues on. The days of Elijah and Moses, the music, the song, it was already sung. Olive tree. Remember the last day I was at, we saw that olive tree in the, in the corner of the dining room two nights in a row with black ripe olives on it. Sean Moses Mitchell and the other guy are the olive trees. There we are being a representation of it, man. Showing God's prophecy. Showing God's goodness. And the days of Elijah was already sung and that was a sign from God. God wants you and I to realize that was a sign from God when you saw that innocent little Filipino group singing that song on the Canadian trek. You know, the Canadian fire, the olive tree, Elijah. Hosea 7.15, though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do they imagine mischief against me. I'm here to love, Israel, God says, and they hate me. They can't stand me. Even the people singing the days of Elijah don't know Jesus, don't know his word. But they sing the lyrics and they clap their hands. And then this goes right through the middle of verse 923. The man-child caught up. That's Elijah and Moses escaping Satan's death twice. In the rapture, right? At the rapture time, New York City, the East Coast is going to be blown off the map. And God saves Sean and the other guy. Boom, saves them. Sends them back. We already saw that in the last code. They're here for three and a half years. Satan kills them and thinks he's chased them off and thinks he's going to eat them alive. Then their heads get attached right back to them. They shake their heads a couple of times, dust themselves off, and God raptures them back up again. Satan, you can't have them once or twice. Right there. And so the 923 is 1 Samuel 923 that says, And Samuel said unto the cook, Hey, bring a portion which I gave you, of which I said unto you, set it by you. Come talk to me. And that verse happens to be right here in this, in this table, and it's 923. And 1 Samuel is the ninth book of the Bible. Judgment. Ninth book of the Bible, 923. Boom. And then Watkins, my last name, starts at 2 Chronicles 610. And the Lord hath established his word that he spoke for. The Bible code. It's established. Sean sends it to me. It's established. Ain't nobody changing it. And then I get the privilege of speaking it. The fire of God. The sword of the Lord. And of Sean Mitchell. Amen. The word that is spoken. For I am risen up in the room of, of David my father, Solomon. He's taken David's place. He built the temple. And that's what this verse is talking about. Uh, just as the Lord promised. I built that temple, the house in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. And let's look at that again. That was at a skip of 410,421. Watkins praised the days of Elijah and Moses. You guys remember seeing that video the other night? Them singing that song, the days of Elijah, and there's Watkins in there ready to preach the fire of God. I had to preach it in baby steps. To the beginners, that's how, that's how we preach it to every beginner. Make sure you're saved, and here we go. Get busy serving the Lord. Once you're saved, that's the first nine verses and that tenth verse is now. 
We are God's masterpiece created to get to work. Amen? All right. And so we got there, the days of Elijah the, and Moses, the music, the song, it was already sung, Olive Tree and Canada. Come on, dude. All right, next one. Boom. Man, I praise God. Even being late here, you guys are right here. And then our crowd that joins us every morning, they'll be seeing this too. All right, here's the next one. It's kind of hard to see too, I'm sure, with this bright light too. Boom. That's it. Got the red all the way over to the edge. Boom, boom. There it is. All right. This one here is at a skip of 217,616. 217,616. Now, 217 is my birthday. February 17th is my birthday. 217 we saw earlier, that's when the flood came. And the 17th day of the second month is when the flood of Noah came. Okay? God's always attached me to the Noah story, to the destruction story, to be a prophet at the end of days preaching prophecy. In the plain text and the coded text, it's a privilege, guys. Get out there and preach it yourself. Share these codes. Share these sermons. So we got a negative, so it's going from the bottom upward. 217,616, and it, here's what it says. Watkins, that's me, was astonished by my trails of Moses. The Bible codes. Each one going down a different rabbit trail kind of thing, but these are God's trails and the trails of Moses as the Holy Spirit led him. Hey, come follow me. Okay, where does this code take us? I was astonished. I, I'm astonished at everyone. I'm astonished at these right now. I come in here, finally got me some internet, pop, fired it up, and there's a new trail. Let's chase that rabbit. Amen? That's what we're doing right now. Watkins was astonished by my trails of Moses. And God specifies his my, capital M. This is my trails of Moses. I love the Bible codes. Then we got the green verse, Psalm 52.10. But as for me, I am like a leafy olive tree in the house of God. There's that olive tree again. We're up here in Canada proclaiming the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, representing God in his Bible codes. And both of us are in the same state for the first time ever. Ontario? I drove seven miles from his house. Do you guys know when you're looking at the kilometer markers, you come across 923 right there in his town? The first time today that I, the speaker, and him, the Bible guy, him, the Bible code guy, his being Moses and Elijah, the two guys right here before the rapture who were speaking these codes were together for the first time today. Right here in the same state. God's awesome. He's pointing to certain clues. He's pointing to the olive tree. He's pointing to me and my mission here. To declare the word of the Lord in his code, in his dialect. Psalm 52.10. But as for me, I am like a leafy olive tree in the house of God. Blue, navy, pink, brown. Long live the days of Elijah. Preacher, the prophecy of Jehovah is fire. The codes. I get to preach the words of Elijah with fire. Watkins was astonished, man. Watkins' mind was blown by my trails of Moses. Amen? Long live the days of Elijah, preacher, the prophecy of Jehovah is fire. And then we have code right there. That is the fire. I get the privilege to preach it. Gold, 2 Samuel 11.10. David said unto Uriah, Art thou come from a journey? David killed Uriah the Hittite. Uriah's name means my light is Jehovah or flame of God. I get to preach the light of Jehovah, the Bible codes, the flame of God. And I'm astonished every time I get to do it. And God is paying note of it. And then God had us right here, the, the, the two known guys. I'm right here, the preacher of Moses' word. I get that privilege, guys. You get the privilege to hear it.
You get the privilege to see the fire on the mountain. We get to approach God. Nobody's ever approached God and got to see his face and live. But because of Jesus and the shed blood, we get to come and we have the shroud of turn to look straight into the face of Jesus. And we learned all that through these Bible codes, this fire. I'm astonished every time I see these codes. And here we are together. We were together for a very small moment, about seven kilometers, miles, I forget what it is, apart. And 923 runs right through his place. It was, I can't remember if it was 229 uh, or 293, whatever, but it was 923 was the mile markers. And I was like, what in the world am I astonished? God, you're awesome. You're awesome. You've set this whole thing up, all these numbers. It's sign in the heavens. And David said unto Uriah, art thou not come from a long journey? And Uriah means my light is Jehovah, flame of God. You guys know that the guy that played uh, Darth Vader died today, right? Earl, what's his name? Jones, whatever. I'm your father, Luke. Do you guys know that Luke means the light? Luke means light, Lucius. The light giver. Darth Vader is Satan. Luke Skywalker is the Antichrist. They're both on the same team. I'm your father, Luke, the father of lies, the father of hell. Uriah is my light, and this word is God's light. This word is the fire. Jeremiah 17, 27, but if ye will not hearken unto me, to hallow the Sabbath day, and not to bear a burden, and enter at the gates of Jerusalem. This is Sean and the other guy talking to the Jews. Guys, you got to get back to the law. You got to get back to the word. You got to get back to Genesis through Deuteronomy and understand and know God. Come to know him. And they're going to fast track them in the belief of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua, Hamashiach, their Messiah. And you guys better understand the truth about Jerusalem in the day. Uh, that I will kindle a fire in the gates thereof and shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem and it shall not be put out. It shall not be quenched. I'm coming to kill everything. And Sean and the other guy is going to be warning everybody. And I am warning everybody what Sean has written, what Moses has written. My mind is blown at the miraculous map of God and where these trails take us. And I believe them and I shout from the rooftop and you believe them and you share it every day, every night. And we're on fire for God, preaching the fire of God, the sword of God, the light of God, not the light of Satan. Uriah is the light of God. Luke Skywalker, he's the light of the devil. The light bringer. That's Freemasonry, guys. Lucifer is the bringer of light. But God has a true light, and that's these Bible codes. That's the plain text. And Satan has his movies and everything else, every other false light. Psalm 55.3. God looked forth from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any man that understood and that did seek after God. And I will give you thanks. This is Psalm 52, 11. I'll give you thanks forever because thou hast done it and you, uh, and I will wait for your name, Lord, for it is good in the presence of thy saints. And Sean down here preaching to all these people praying. This is a song and he's writing his own song book. The song of Moses Mitchell and the Lamb. We're going to give you thanks forever because you have done it, Lord. And I will wait for your name for it is good in the presence of, of thy saints. And I believe that every time I preach. I'm astounded at what I see in here. And I preach it to you. Because it's the word of God. It's fresh fire from heaven. Heather gets excited about it because she knows what this is. And we encourage you all to get excited. And you guys, you regulars are all jacked up about it. And I love it. And this is your true light. You love the word. You love the plain text and the coded text. Ezekiel 34, 6. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill and upon the face of the earth where my sheep scattered and there was none that did search or seek. That's why God sent in Sean and the other guy back to be the shepherds of these people to bring them back under the tutelage, under the schooling, under the love of the great shepherd, the chief shepherd. I'm going to bring them back, bring the sheep back, the scattered sheep from all around the world. They're going to be coming back to Israel, and Sean will be preaching that truth. Get yourself back to Israel. We're preaching it on this side. I am preaching exactly 
what Sean will be preaching then. I get the privilege to preach it on this side, to warn everybody going into it, get saved. You don't have to go to the tribulation. But if you do go to the tribulation, you find those two guys down there in Jerusalem, Sean Mitchell and the other guy, and they'll be preaching the same truths. Guys, do you understand the privilege of sharing these Bible codes? You are preaching Moses and Elijah, what they will be preaching, but you preached it before they did. Amen. Get busy. Understand what you got your hands on and quit playing with this thing. And so the sheep are wondering, and God's going to send Sean back to uh, help him. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm a pastor. I'm a shepherd. And we're trying to guide everybody in the right direction. You Christians, read your Bibles 10 to 20 chapters a day. That's what a good shepherd would do. Send them to the feeding trough. You, shepherds don't starve their sheep. We bless the sheep. And so here we get the privilege on this side to speak these same Bible codes that Sean's going to introduce to those people on that side. <laughs> Please understand this thing, man. I'm astonished. Are you? Watkins was astonished by my trails of Moses, my Bible codes, at that skip of 217, my birthday. That Watkins. Amen. So, guys, we preach them on this side, and I'm going to encourage you to preach them on this side. You be one of those two witnesses over here, or maybe one of the 12 witnesses. However many of you there are that share this stuff, you be one of them. All right, here's one. Let's look at this photograph here. This is at a skip of a negative 124,008. All right. Boom. Is that it? That's it. Let's turn it sideways. Maybe it'd be bigger. Yeah. Okay, here we go. This is the next one we're looking at. Let's see. Can you see any of those? Code? This is just weird to me tonight, man. Do you see where the green goes? What is that? Blue over in the corner there? Yeah, blue. Blue on this corner right over here. And then it works into that solid green verse. Bam. Then you got your main... Text going upward and the others. All right. Bam. Let's see what we got here. This is at a skip of negative 124,008. Moses is the heap of my strength. The days of Elijah are with the Most High. So we got Moses and Elijah, and they are going to be part of God's judgment. The heaps of destruction, the heaps of God's vengeance. They will be witnessing it as prophets before it happens. And as it happens, they will have left heaps of trails of garbage and piles of rock and destruction. And here's one for you there, fella, and they're gonna be destroying the whole place. They're gonna leave a wake of death behind them and destruction and heaps of ruin. They're God's ministers of that. You don't hear that preached often in the pulpit, but it needs to be. It's the Bible code and we need to be astonished about it. Amen? All right, so this is Moses is a heap of my strength. The days of Elijah are with the Most High. Then we have the blue, the pink, the brown, and the navy. Mitchell, the flame of Watkins. What is that? I get to preach these Bible codes. It's the flame of you when you share it. The f it's Mitchell. Uh... Green, the green verse here is Psalm 78, 56. Yet they tried and provoked God the Most High and kept not his testimonies. And that's why they're going to be left in the tribulation because they won't, the Jews, they won't listen to God. They haven't listened to God in years, over 2,000 years. And God tried to warn them in World War II. Six million of them were killed. One third of every Jew was killed then and they didn't learn and they came out bigger atheists after that. If there was a God, that never would have happened. And all God was wanting you to do was turn to him and believe. And that's what Sean will be doing down here. And that's what I'm doing here right now on this side. We're saying, please, guys, believe. Believe these codes. Believe that the two witnesses are going to be bringing the same truth that I'm bringing you now. It's not a different message. It's the same message. We get to hear the same message right here on this side that they're going to be preaching on that side. The only difference is you got an opportunity to believe and become part of the bride of Christ right now. And will you please do this or don't? And you that are the bride of Christ, why don't you act like a lady? Why don't you act like a non-whore? Why don't you wear your gown and quit stomping in mud puddles with it?
Okay, keep your robe clean. Come to the word every day. And as it tells you what to do, do it. Don't regret it. Don't negate it. Don't hate it. Don't poo-poo it. Say, Lord, if I find something in this next 10 chapters that I'm going to read in these next 20 chapters, and you want me to stop doing something, I want to immediately stop doing that. And if you encourage me to start doing something, that's what Paul tells us in the New Testament. You know, the grace books, put off the old man. Put on the new man. Like clothes. Take off your trashy clothes. Take off your trashy life. Take off your trashy habits and put on new habits that coincide with Scripture at God's commands. And that's what we're preaching on this side to the saints. And Sean will be preaching this on that side to the Jews and the tribulation saints. Yet they tried, tested, and provoked God the Most High and kept not His testimonies. The flame of Watkins. And what is the flame of Watkins doing every night? Preaching about that, that Brown is 1260. I'm preaching about Sean Mitchell's ministry with the other guy for three and a half years, 1260 days. And God's got it right here. The flame of Watkins, 1260, the Levites. I'm telling you about these two every day. We just found out tonight in this Bible code that both of these guys, Moses and Elijah, we knew Moses, Sean already. He's, he's Moses, Elijah, but we knew him to be a Levite, a son of Moses. And now we learn tonight that the other guy is two. And then right here, he's got me preaching about it. The flame of Watkins, which is the Bible code, the word of God. The testimony of righteousness. 1260, that's all we preach about here. The upcoming by faith, prophecy, prophecy, prophecy. Listen to these two. Hear ye them. The Levites. Both of those terms join right to Elijah. 1260 in the Levites. Levi, uh, Levi will be here, Elijah, for 1260 days. And he's a Levite. Pointing right to Elijah. The word heap can mean a heap of ruins or a mound or a pile. They're going to leave a heap of ruins behind them as they preach and they squirt out fire and kill a 50 here and 150 over there. Wipe out people who are trying to hurt old ladies. They're going to watch somebody pounding on an old lady, stealing her bag. And old Moses and Elijah are going to walk over there and just fry this dude. Say, ma'am, are you Okay. You need to be in the right place at the right time. You need to hear our voice when we preach. Okay, sweetie? God has a wonderful plan and he wants to put you in hiding. And they're going to be killing folks along the way, guys. They're going to be God's vengeance. God hates it when people mess with children and old ladies, old folks, helpless folks. And these guys are going to be bringing the fire, man, and leaving heaps behind them. Sean and the other guy leave at the rapture and they come back again. Um... Uh, after the resurrection, they, they, they leave both times, at the rapture and the resurrection. And the code ends right here at 2 Kings 1.10. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and kill you and your 50 guys. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50 guys. It's going to be just like this in the tribulation, man. Sean and the other guy are going to be doing this. And they're preaching the flame of God and fire, and they're going to be calling down fire. The word flame also means tongue of fire, the word of God. The word of God coming off their lips. Destroy. That's the word Jesus is going to use when he comes back and kills everybody at the Valley of Megiddo. Be destroyed. And it's going to happen. Sean and the other guy will be saying that all, all along for the three and a half years. The 1260 days that we just saw right over there. 1260. And they're going to be calling fire down from heaven and killing folk. No joke. And then let's take this to the computer. Let's take this to the AI and see what they say about this code. The term written in Hebrew, uh, lahava, la lahava, something like that. It means flame or tongues of fire in Hebrew. It refers to a burning or blazing fire and is often used to describe intense flames or fiery appearance. The word of God bringing it, dude. So, it's associated with fire and can be metaphor, uh, metaphorically used to represent something fiery, passionate, or intense. Ain't that what we bring here every night? The fire of God, the Bible codes, passionate, fiery, intense. 
and Watkins tongue of fire is what this is meaning. In some contexts, it can mean the tip of a spear or a blade. Ooh, he just penetrated me with that truth. I don't like that. I, I, I experienced that this weekend. Counseling and truth, man. People, people don't like it when you pierce their truth. They wanted their truth to be the right one, and the other guy was wrong. No, you're wrong, man. Read that Bible. It'll tell you what to take off and what to put on every day. And because you don't read your Bible, you got a lot to take off there, hon. You got a lot to take off there, bro. Let's take it off and put on Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, the same word is here in this verse. Psalm 27, 9. The voice of the Lord hews out flames of fire. The plain text has always done that. I, I preached the plain text for 38 years. I preached this Bible code for 10 Eight. We really picked her up about four years ago when everybody left my church three years ago. I, I'm bad with time. We started preaching these Bible codes, and they came and said, yeah, about these Bible codes. I said, you know what? I'm going to keep preaching them. Y'all are free. Just feel free to leave here and go find you another church because I'm preaching these Bible codes. Boy, they all left. Amen. All glory to God. Did anyone have an open heart? Yes. Yes. This church, uh, this Filipino church, they were open hearts. Open hearts. We didn't hear they had not heard this stuff before. They were stunned at the preaching, at the fire of Watkins, because they're used to the, the Filipino pastors. They talk really, you know, soft and things. They bring the word of God. But I got up there and you saw the video. I just preached to them just what we preach, and that's the fire of Watkins here. God calls it the Watkins tongue of fire, and we just preach the truth. And there's about eight of you that believe this. The rest of people just, what's wrong with that guy? Because they don't understand the heart of God. See, guys, you're going to love the Bible code once you love the Bible. Once you come to learn Jesus Christ, who he is, his voice, his heart, everything, the way he would do things, his nuances in the plain text, you're ready for this coded text. Amen, 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 amen. Bring me the fire, even if it hurts, bring me the fire. Because I want to be right with you, Lord. I want your word to be my heart, my mind, Lord, God. 8, 9, 10, 12 of you. Amen. Amen. I praise God for the 8, 9, 10, 12 of you. I do, man. It's a fire of God here. And it's going to be the fire of not Watkins, but your name when you're preaching the word of God in truth, in context, in love. Amen? For everybody's sake, for your good. God says, I'm doing all this for your good. And that's what this whole ministry has been about. And you and I get the privilege to, to have a partial um, anointing and the, the a partial impartation to be able to preach the same fire that Sean and the other guy are doing. That's why I'm astonished. I, I, I'm preaching the same message they're going to be preaching in the streets of Jerusalem. And so are you when you share these Bible codes. We are blessed people. Walk in that blessing, will you? All right. The voice of the Lord hews out flames of fire. Isaiah 40 and verse 9. O thou that tellest good tidings to Zion, get up to a high mountain. O thou that tellest good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. That's what we're saying right now on this side. Behold your God, guys. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You got to know him. You, your salvation's only in him. Not you, not anybody else, man. Lord bless him. Lord bless him. And uh, get him the word. To the chief musician, this is, here's the number for you, Heather. Psalm 11, 1. 1, 1, 1. What does that mean? Can you please post us what 1, 1, 1 means? To the chief musician, a psalm of David in the Lord, put I my trust. And how say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain. Sean, he's about to flee to the mountain. We're all about to flee to the mountain. The rapture mountain. We're going to go in door number four, and Sean is going to be coming down with the other guy, their dissension. They're going to land on the mountain and come down the mountain. And then every now and then, God's going to have them come up to the mountain. Fly up to the mountain there, birdie, birdie. Zephaniah 118, neither their silver nor their gold will be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole earth shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy, for he will make an end, yea, a terrible end of all them that dwell on the earth. Fear of God, guys. One, one, one. Fear of God. That's what we have here, isn't it? 
We all fear the Lord and we love him. And we all know the privilege of being his voice. We are the same voice of the two prophets, the two olive trees, the two lampstands. We're the same voice. We just did it as prophecy. They're going to do it in now time. We're doing it in warning, warning, it's coming, it's coming. And when you see these two guys in Jerusalem, when you see all the children go missing, when you see that the fake space aliens have been introduced, guys, oh, it's too late then. You heard us say it on this side. Sean on that side would be saying, you should have heard the preachers. You, sh you should have heard Aaron when she shared my codes. You should have heard, you know, Brother David. You should have heard all these other people when they shared my stuff. Kush shared it every day. Gary, every day. Yolanda, every day you should have heard their voice. They warned you of this. We get, to sh we get to speak the voice of the prophets, the elect ones, the chosen ones in Israel. Please be that voice today of faith because their silver and gold ain't going to be able to save them. Hey, that was the last code. Let's go over it again. That was at a skip of 124,008. Moses is the heap of my strength. Sean's going to be leaving ruins all over the place. The days of Elijah are with the Most High, Mitchell. This is the guy God's talking about, Mitchell. Psalm 78, 56. Yea, they that tested and provoked God, the Most High, and kept not his testimonies. The flame of Watkins, the flame of you. Share this stuff, will you? Share this stuff. Get it out there. The Flame of Watkins, 1260, 1260, the first three and a half years, and then Obama's going to go into the temple, and everybody run. Ain't that what we always talk about here? The Levites, ain't that what we always talk about here? The two witnesses, as prophecy, y'all better had known that. And both of those terms join right to Elijah. Praise God, guys. What a bunch. Stay up this late. Hear the fire of the Lord. Amen. The fire of Watkins. The fire of you. Share the fire. That's the cool thing about fire, you know. It'll catch other stuff on fire. We encourage you to be that fire. Amen. I love you. Let's pray. Oh, Papa, thank you for letting us get this taken care of, even, even in the dark, even late, late. And bless everybody here. Bless the folks who um, had to sleep through this, but get a, wake up in the morning here. I pray you'll bless them with it. Bless them with the fire, the 1260 message, and Moses and Elijah. They're, they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. Take heed. And I pray that many will be saved before then, Lord. But if they won't, that you'll get them the word quickly. They'll recognize Sean and the other guy. And they will listen. They will heed to what they've heard. And we praise you. And I pray that we will heed to everything that you, your voice, has shouted. Whether in this sermon, audibly, or in the coded text, in the plain text. That we will hear your voice and do what you say and not be like these Jews who are going to be stuck in the tribulation. Who did not your testimonies. Who hated your word. And we pray for them to be saved and saved quickly. Help us to sleep well tonight, Lord, to your glory. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, man. Praise God. Hey, now, faith is now the substance of things hoped for, evident, evidence of things not seen. One, one, one. Fear of God. Fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom, folks. You ain't, you ain't even smart until you'll read your Bible. You're a stupid retard until you read your Bible. You may confess yourself and think yourself so great, but you ain't. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' holy name, says Heather. Amen, says Sister Aaron. Amen. Brother Carlos, Maranatha. It's so wonderful having you all here. I know it was a late start and a late finish, but praise God. Here we are, 11 o'clock. In my time, Eastern time zone, 10 o'clock back home. Amen. Brother David says, amen. Guys, I love you. Why don't you go preach the, the song of Sean Moses and the Lamb. God took note of me a long time ago, being right there in the middle of the song of Elijah. And it was already sung. I saw the whole thing. Hey, looky here. Kim says, amen. Adrian, amen. Hold to our faith. God confirms when we pray for it. Grace and truth here. Look at Sean Mitchell saying, amen. Good to have you here with us, bro. We got a late start. But praise God, we got to start. Amen. I love you guys by his grace. We should be on time tomorrow. That's, that's the game plan. Um, we're we, we sh we're, we're going to chill tomorrow. Tomorrow is a, I can't even take another step. 
day. We're going to chill out here and just be here. Um, Brother George is going to come visit us right after work. He's a hard-working dentist, and he's always got people in that chair. And pray for them just to stay busy until the Lord comes. And uh, he and his wife run that little clinic of theirs, and just they get to work together. God bless them. And pray, pray for them just to have handfuls on purpose. And they're a good couple together. They're a good team. And I praise God about that. And so we should see you at the 726 tomorrow. I love you. God bless.